think Dostoevsky is necessarily excusing um, the thing that Raskolnikov did, but he, he is suggesting that, that being in an isolated situation can help maybe drive a person to a certain kind of behavior, right? All right, chapter five. Uh, let's get into chapter five. So I have a couple of interesting, uh, interesting questions on the board today. And the first thing we're going to consider today is what contributes to criminal behavior. So over the course of, of Dostoevsky's novel, I think probably one of the biggest things that he's trying to, to focus on is uh, what makes a criminal a criminal. So phrenologists were arguing that, uh, that based on the shape of a person's head, you can tell things. Now that seems very ridiculous to us today. How many people are there in the 21st century who are card-carrying phrenologists? Probably zero. Um, just like in Frankenstein, and you have Victor reading all these, um, you know, all these really, really outdated philosophers. It would be just as ridiculous for us in the 21st century to be card-carrying phrenologists as it would be for Victor Frankenstein to, to be a disciple of Cornelius Agrippa, you know, or something like that. But why am I making this point? Uh, do people do things just as ridiculous today? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I put I put on the board, for instance, a few uh, a few television shows. To catch a predator. Ever watched that before? Criminal yeah. Minds. Oh, oh, criminal oh. Minds. Oh. What about the show Lie to Me? Or Psych? Or The Mentalist? What, what do all these things have in common? They try to the the morality of criminals. They start getting inside the head of a criminal. Yeah. What What is this criminal really like on the inside? Can we Can we use uh, our analysis of this criminal's mind to to predict the behavior of another person. Can you know in advance whether or not a person is going to be a criminal? Uh, this is a question that, is, that, you know, that has been on the mind of, of human beings for a really long time, I think. It goes back to, to crime and punishment. The whole premise of this novel is we have a person who is, uh, who is poor, who is isolated, who is perhaps even insane. And all these factors contribute together to make him do something that he may not have done otherwise. Let's start with Megan, because you say he's in the room. Yes. Let's talk about that. Like when he said, or why he murdered, it's he was kind of proving to himself, or he was trying to prove to himself that he's greater than the average man because that's what he believed. He wrote that paper on it that they mentioned in like part three or four or something like that, and he's trying to prove it. And then after he does it and he's going insane, he realizes he might have been wrong. Okay, so he has this paper, and the paper is essentially about the about this German. This German philosophy of the Ubermensch, the Superman, that there are some people who are greater than the average person. But don't we still kind of think that today? Don't we believe in that? What is a way in the 21st century that, 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 that we, as, say, uh, Americans, um, believe that there, are, that there are some people that are literally better than everybody else? Allison? Well, just look at how many times all the celebrities in Hollywood get in trouble and they get off a lot Great of Great Role models to the... Uh, the children and whoever else is in American society. So if they're going to go and do bad stuff, get caught with drugs, whatever, call, uh, do crimes, uh, that's sending a negative message to the population. Do you think that isolation and insanity were factors for, for Raskolnikov? Was he insane at the beginning of the novel? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't he, think he, was. he walks into a bar. I think he was. A guy walks into a bar. It sounds like <laughs> <laughs> so Raskolnikov walks into a bar and, uh, and he sees these two guys you know, talking about this old lady who deserves to die. Well, it's easy for us to judge that, but don't we kind of do the same thing? Are there people, are, are there categories of people in your mind that you believe deserve to be relegated to a certain part of society? Like, we used to have segregation because people prejudice people based on how they appeared. It's the same concept. It's like, you don't know them, and we realized later on that we had the mistake of doing that, and we ended up stopping segregation, there. but for the longest time, People, like, even in this situation, we wouldn't have all these different races in one classroom together because people thought, oh, they're different. What is Dostoevsky asking us to think about human beings and human behavior? What is he trying to, what is he trying to trigger? I think he's, he, he's like focusing on the way humans, they make decisions mm -hmm. with uh, relating to other people. We have to judge in order to make decisions. Humanity is imperfection. Imperfection is what makes us unique. But you're not born with it. But that you're exposed you to it as a child. As a is there an element of determinism yeah. because of the way you're born and the way that you're... you're that process, decided? that whole thing is encoded in your DNA. Yeah. I'm not saying that a person is not responsible for them being 